Suppose I take that equation and I multiply by, I, I, if A inverse existed, which of course I'm going to come to the conclusion it can't. Because if it existed, if there was an A inverse to this dopey matrix, I would multiply that equation by that inverse and I would discover X is zero. If I multiply A by A inverse on the left, I get X. If I multiply by A inverse on the right, I get zero. So I would discover X was zero. But it, X is not zero. X, this guy wasn't zero. There it is. It's three minus one. So, conclusion. Only it take us some time to really work with that conclusion. Our conclusion will be that that in that that non-invertible matrices, singular matrices, some combinations of their some combination of their columns gives a zero column. They, they take some vector x into zero, a and there's no way A inverse can recover it, right? Th that, that's what this equation says. This equation says I take this vector x and multiplying by A gives zero. But then when I multiply by A inverse, I can never escape from zero. So there couldn't be an A inverse where here, Okay, now fix, uh, all right, now let, let me take a, all right, back to the positive side. Let's take a matrix that does have an inverse. And why not invert it? Okay, can I, so let me take on this third board a matrix, shall I fix that up a little? Uh, tell me a matrix that has got an inverse. Well, let me say one, three, two. What shall I put there? Well, don't put six, I guess is right. You want any any favorites here? One or eight? I don't care. What, seven? Seven. Okay. Seven is a lucky. One. All right. Seven. Okay. Okay, so now what's our idea? We believe that this matrix is inverted. Th those who like determinants have quickly taken its determinant and found it wasn't zero. Those who like columns and probably that, that department is not totally popular yet, but those who like columns will look at those two columns and say, hey, they point in different directions, so I can get anything. Now, let, let, let me see, what do I mean? H how am I going to compute A inverse? So A inverse, here's A inverse. Uh, and I have to find it. And, and what do I get when, I'm, when I do this multiplication? The identity. Uh, you know, forgive me for taking two by two, but it's good to keep the computations manageable and let the ideas come out. Okay, now what's the idea I want? Uh, I'm looking for this matrix A inverse, how am I going to find it? Right now, it's, uh, I've got four numbers to find. I'm going to look at the first column. Let me take this first column, A, B. What's up there? What equation, yeah, tell me this, what equation does the first column satisfy? The first column satisfies A times that column is one zero. The first column of the answer. And the second column, CD, satisfies A times that second column is zero one. Do you see that finding the inverse is like solving two systems? One system when the right hand side is one zero. I'm just going to split it into two pieces. That, that, I, don't, I, I don't even need to rewrite it. I can, I can say, take A times, so let me put it here. A times column J of A inverse is column J of the identity. 
I've got n equations. I've got, well, two in this case. And they have the same matrix A, but they have different right-hand sides. The right-hand sides are just the columns of the identity, this guy and this guy. And these are the two solutions. Do you, do you see what I'm doing? I'm looking at that equation by columns. I'm looking at A times this column, giving that guy, and A times that column, giving that guy. So, essentially, so this is like the Gauss, we're back to Gauss. We're back to solving systems of equations, but we're solving, we've got two right-hand sides instead of one. That's where Jordan comes in. So, so at the very beginning of the lecture, I mentioned Gauss-Jordan. Let me write it up again. Okay, here's the Gauss Jordan idea. Gauss Jordan. Is solved, solve two equations at once. Okay, let me show you how the how the mechanics show. How, how do I solve a, a single equation? So the two equations are uh, 1, 3, 2, 7 multiplying A, B gives 1, 0. And the other equation is the same 1, 3, 2, 7 multiplying C, D gives 0, 1. Okay. That'll tell me the two columns of the inverse. I'll have the inverse. In other words, if I can solve with this matrix A, if I can solve with that right-hand side and that right-hand side, I'm invertible. I've got it. Okay. And, the, and Jordan sort of said to Gauss, solve them together. Look at the matrix. If we just solve this one, I would look at 1, 3, 2, 7. And how do I deal with the right-hand side? I stick it on as an extra column, right? You remember that's, that's this augmented matrix. That's the matrix when I'm watching the right-hand side at the same time, doing the same thing to the right side that I do to the left. So I just carry it along as an extra column. Now I'm going to carry along two extra columns. And I'm going to do whatever Gauss wants, right? I'm going to do elimination. I'm going to get this to be simple. And this thing will turn into the inverse. This is what's coming. I'm going to do elimination steps to make this into the identity. And lo and behold, the inverse will show up here. Okay. Let's do it. OK, so what are the elimination steps? So you see that here's my matrix A, and here's the identity, like stuck on, augmented on. I'm sorry, yeah. Since you didn't use the first three switch. Did I? Oh, no, they weren't supposed to be switched. Sorry, thanks. Okay. 